Hey guys. Hi. Hi. Welcome to another episode. Episode 108. <laughs> Can you imagine episode 108 of Banter Over Brunch? Yes. And this in case you guys haven't seen, we have a special guest on set. Like we are three of us today. We mm-hmm. have a lovely beautiful lady living in our promises. Yes. And we had an amazing episode. Did you enjoy that episode? Yes, I definitely enjoyed like discussing everything we talked about yeah yes. guys i think this is one of the best episodes that we have for this season so make sure that you li- i'm just very excited for you to listen to it uh we talked about all things to do following your dreams and goals and aspirations that you set for yourself and yeah. being the best version of a go-getter that you can be yeah. what else am i leaving out of course development self-improvement and just mm-hmm. also balancing life because again life it ain't that serious sometimes exactly yes. so it was a very wholesome Mm. we really hope you enjoy it and yeah let us know in the comments what you think about this episode and please 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 follow up with Yvonne because the the information that she gives is timeless so yeah we've also left the link to the description for you to do what you need to do including subscribe okay guys <laughs> see you, see you. <laughs> Welcome to episode 108 of Banter of a Branch. My name is Alex. Well, my name is Alice Kanji, and today, obviously, you can see we are joined by someone lovely. Yeah. The season of guests, guys, we've been saying. So, do you. We promised and we're delivering. So. Eh, and yeah. even the next. Mm, we're not saying anything, but just, guys, very exciting season ahead. Yes. And this episode is nothing less of that. Um, I don't know if our guest now wants to give us a, a quick intro about who she is. Yeah, before we get into the episode. Hi guys. Um, my name is Yvonne Kanye. I am who? It's so hard to describe who you are. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> um, I guess first and foremost, I am a business owner. I run and own Beauty Square, and recently my new baby, uh, Skin by Kanye. So I'm a licensed Ooh. esthetician <laughs> by profession. Um. Yeah, but I'm also really passionate about self-development, about digital marketing, and all of that good stuff. Yeah, yeah I think that's a small capsule. Lovely. It's a very lovely capsule. I'm really excited to just learn more about, you know, the ladies who really put the show on the shakers. road. The movers and shakers. <laughs> by the way, the guys. The material we're bringing. <laughs> the material. <laughs> Oh my gosh, mm-hmm. by the way, speaking of which, I'm mm-hmm. uh, sorry to digress, but over 25, did you guys see they're <laughs> wow, over? Nice yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. said movers and shakers and I thought of just Ivy. Yeah. How do you guys feel about it? Why are you guys a bit watchers? Am I you just like... In the Ivy? beginning, I was such an avid watcher. Like yeah. when I found over 25, I binged all of their videos and I feel like I really was relating with... I think they just hit over 25 and I was mm-hmm. really relating with a lot of the stuff they're talking about. Um, but I think with time... I think it's natural for people to kind of like just, yeah. you know, gravitate away from each other. And it's good to recognize and be like, ah, oh, let's just call it a yeah. rap. Yeah. yeah. I think for me also, I always remember the first person who introduced me to over 25. So I was in high school and a friend of mine was like, oh my God, Alexia, you need to listen to these people. So now that time it was being Calabash. Chico and Rama, yes. and now over 25. There was so, also the Two Cents, My Two Cents by yes, Sharon Mindy and, oh, and, and Susan. 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 Yeah, yeah, those are the OG, I think, YouTube YouTubers. channels. Mm. So I go and I'm seeing all these ladies, and I'm like, oh my God, I have big sisters, you know, because yeah. all of them are so different and so interesting. And I remember, was it Ivy who was pregnant at some point, and I was so excited she has twins and yeah. all that. So it's sad to see that the, they're going their separate ways, but especially because with time i ended up following them individually of mm. course and i know lonzi's content i know shiki's exactly. content i know ivy's content i think I know people started Joel's really content. focusing on their individual content yeah so we all started gravitating to their own individual content which is good content as well i mean even yes, just now we're talking absolutely. about so this is love and all that so in terms of also our working dynamic i remember even us when we started working together we were like by the way, we were friends first before this, you know. Yeah. And yes, maybe a time will reach when people have to go their separate ways. Life takes us to another country or something and you can't mm. really keep up with this. Mm. It's okay. This can this came after, you know, yeah. and we'll still maintain the friendship and won't stop each other from mm. growing into Yeah. yeah. Mm. I think my thoughts about it is I think even if maybe 
people stopped at some point, which is normal for any type of content. I think umeshiba your content like okay, let me focus on other people, and then maybe you'll come back like oh yeah, let's watch like binge watch like four three videos, but at a certain point in time, like we were they had an impact at whatever level it was yeah. in their lives. And even if we don't follow up every day, like you knew that tra- like their lives and we were following up. We knew when Lonzi got pregnant, we knew anyway, we were there. Yeah, we've grown with them and we've they've grown, grown with, with us. Yeah. And seven years when they were describing it, I was like, wow, seven years is such a long time. But at the same time, but our branch has been here for three yes. years. Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> wow, like it doesn't even feel, it feels like for us, it's just the beginning, but it feels like our story is just very similar to how theirs has also just uh, I've been throughout like just starting uni mm. then like progressing so it's just scary but it's also just like um i mean it's Life not the worst yeah, it's not the worst. yeah and the i think it also helps them to get to where they are today so sorry guys for we love you over 25 and we'll still keep yes. following your content which member do you guys feel like you related with the most I feel like we would say the same person. Jules. Jules. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you? Like, I relate to Jules. A hundred percent. She just gives me very Alice vibes, but at the same time, I, a bit of just Ivy. I think okay, a, bit, yeah. a bit of both personalities for me yeah. because, you know, she's being her movers thing and me, I'm starting my tech journey. So mm. it's like very interesting. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Jules is very relatable. I love her content. It's very like, so this is love. Like, I don't know. Her personality is also very, when I see her sometimes, I'm like, but then for me, I found girl. Me. I saw her at an ABL event. Yes. And I was just like, like you don't know me, but I know you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my god, Jules, and I follow her vlogs and all that. So as content creators, do you yeah. feel like sometimes you get that like someone who knows you and your content, and you're like, eh? It sometimes feels a bit like. Like, whoa, like someone is that invested in like in me as a person. Yeah. But it's also really sweet. And like you get to see the impact that you have on other people. And mm. as long as they're not like creepy about it. Yeah. 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 It feels pretty mm. cool. Yeah. Talking about creeps. Um, <laughs> Murugi Muni posted on her story some mm. of the boundaries that she feels she wants to communicate for her space. Because mm. like, you know, a boundary is not a boundary until you've told someone. About it because otherwise mm. i mean how would i how am i supposed to know about it so mm. i was like oh wow she's been on the internet for so many years people have been in her business for so many years so, so i was so curious to hear uh, some of the things that she was going to bring up and i think mm. you're saying just like as long as it's not in your business because now pe- she was like some people come with some entitlement they want to know about this they want to know mm. about that and i was like I'm happy she's doing that, you know, mm. so guys can just... Be because like, people capitalize on that in Shanepia and this Yeah, world. but she's so, like, you know, yeah. this is my house at yeah. the end of the day. I don't feel unsafe when I come here. I don't feel insecure when I come here. I don't feel some type of way, especially also because it's her office. So she's like, yeah, me, I'm just saying you guys, these are the things that I'm doing to protect my space. Mm. Exactly. Yeah, Even when it comes to houses, hey, you've seen some YouTubers, people... I think, I don't remember who it was, but they had mentioned they had to move because of, you know, some stalkery behavior because maybe you do a house vlog and then come in with someone identifies that house and... Yeah. They tried to come and, like, find you. I don't know, yeah. People, people are, are weird. weird. Let me tell you. They tried to come weird. and find you or they tell you, I know exactly where you live. You know, it's scary. That you live in this house number, in this apartment. Cindy, you like, I know, like... I uh, someone always have fears tell you of that. such things. Mm. Back in days, I don't post roads that are, like, close to where I stay. I don't, pro- I don't post patterns of where I'm going. Yeah. Even sometimes I feel like even public, let's say, gym, somewhere that I go maybe every day, I'm like, I don't, yeah. I don't know where this is. I'm and they know come. the exact time you go to the gym. Yeah. They know the exact... You so, I mean, it's, it, <laughs> I mean, it's positive, no, I, but there's also this effect I, I of... Yeah, being. sometimes. Have you guys ever run into somebody who has record, like, they know you from your content, where you live? It happened this week, actually. Yeah, I think that's when the fear feel. came in. Oh, it wasn't a fear, because it's a lovely person. Like, yeah. we are internet friends. Mm. So, I'm just driving out, and then I, I spot her. So, I'm the one who even created that attention, because I was like, oh! Yeah, so I was yeah. like, oh, phew, it's her. It's mm. not someone else who's like, Alexia or something, because I'd be like, ah. yeah. yeah. So, I have. Mm. But I'm, I'm a bit like okay. But I thought about it. I'm like, why? It was someone else or someone. Yeah, it can be. Eh? You know, people are weird out there. You just never know if you're gonna get super fans that are crazy or people who are just extremely lovely. <laughs> mm. So you just have to hope for the best. But not to say that. Oh my gosh, we're experiencing such a overwhelming <laughs> amount of fame. <laughs> yeah, it's I just know. some things to yeah. be careful to watch out of. 
But yeah, I think then we can <laughs> get, can get into the episode. episode. Yeah, it was like a nice catch up. Thank you for. Mm. But how are you guys? How was your week been? By the way, the, before we now get to the episode, I know that's something we wanted to talk about. Mm. Anything new? Week. Anything you wanted to share? From my week, mm. <laughs> uh, I'm tired. I'm tired. It's uh, Wednesday. Um, yeah, can we call it a week? <laughs> I I saw. Is it Lydia came who took a solo trip? Yeah. And I've been really thinking about it. You know, I've just been like, wow, I'd like time away, time off, even just off my phone, off social media, off all these things, you know, just mm-hmm. to sort of just have time for me. So I'm, I'm thinking about planning a solo trip. Why not? Yeah. Why yeah. not? Do you work Saturday? No, not really. Yeah. yeah. Why? Why? Um, no, I'm just, I'm just curious. <laughs> oh, okay, no. <laughs> um, I've kind of taken the week off. It's been a fake week off because like I've done work here and there, yeah, and like yeah. even after this, I have to go get some work done as well. Um, but I work Saturday, so I really look at people who work like Monday to Friday. I'm like, wow, what does life feel like, like for you yeah. to have two day weekends? Mm. <laughs> Wait, really what nice. do you mean by you work Saturday? Because from my understanding, you have your own shop. So you do you purposefully yeah. say Saturday is also a working day for me? Um. So, okay, before I started doing facials and whatnot, I was there in the capacity of like supervision, assistance, admin work. Um. So I would be there Saturdays, especially because Saturdays tend to be like a busy day at the store. Mm. So a lot of times, sometimes they need help. Or it's just good, like your presence to be there is really important when it comes to running a business. Because sometimes also your staff want support in the sense of, you don't need to do anything, but just feeling that you're yeah, there. Yeah, it yeah. just gives them like a weird sense of like support. And if they need help, they can always come to you and ask. Um, so yeah, Saturdays are normally like a day I have to be there. I can take like a Monday off, a Wednesday off, but like Friday, Saturday, like your presence, it, sh- mm. it should be there. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Wow. Okay. And I think what you're saying is also how consumer behavior. People are most likely to shop over the weekend, maybe mm. come with a friend and, and check stuff out. So it's probably yeah. busy. That yeah, time. people yes. are less yeah. people at work as well. Yeah. So yeah, but now that I'm doing facials, I am open on Saturdays and like I'm doing them myself, so like I have to be there. Wow. Yeah, so I'm um, most weekends I'm ending up working Friday, Saturday, Sunday because that's when people mostly tend to be available. available. Yeah, yeah, that's tough. I don't know if I could do it, but I feel like maybe that you have to have a passion for it for you to what do it. Do? Just show yeah. up yeah. for it. Okay. I was employed. Remember, I was employed and I was you doing used to Saturdays. Do Saturday. Um, hey, I, get was, <laughs> I was so annoyed because there's no work. You know, there's so no I used to come and generally. do those puzzles, and those crosswords, what? like for Where? until lunchtime, and I'm out. So why do they? And genuinely, a lot of people who go to the people. office on Saturdays don't do work. I also know someone else who does work on Saturday, but when he's there, Akuna Kazi. What okay, happens? Of course, there's times yes. there's work. So what we decided as me, I said, I'm not coming here to waste time, and you're not paying me more. You're not paying. Like honestly, mm. I'm not growing anything. So we sat down and we we're like, we're going to do shifts. So mm-hmm. at least may come maybe once a, a month. Mm-hmm. But you know, if any client is coming, they're coming to see me. I'm present, mm-hmm. you know. Because I'm like, why are all of us here and there's nothing we're doing? Literally, exactly. I used to come drink tea, mandazi, go to my desk, play games, Watch go movies. home. Yeah. yeah. It time. is, yeah. but anyway. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, me, I'm in support for you to do a solo location. I have not done yes. one. I've only done one once ever in my entire life and it was such a huge one when i went to the u.s and i went alone at 19 other than that i don't even know how i had the confidence to do that honestly but yeah. shout out to that girl but um, i think even that for you was still a, a mix of work and play or because you still went for i mean i was there for about two weeks but i went for a conference that was like three days and i missed day one because i <laughs> long story but <laughs> so really the conference is an excuse for me to travel but really mm. i just it was just me myself my dad i said go you know release you in the world i felt so like i can't believe i wanted this and i went for it i need that girl mm. back i need that girly back <laughs> that travel girly back have you but done yeah. a solo trip yeah i've done a solo trip i think the most recent one was I went to Uganda in March, but it was more like work. Yeah. And like I was always surrounded by people, so it didn't really feel like a solo a trip. Solo trip. Okay. Yeah, but I I've I watched Lydia's um stories. I was like, actually I feel like I need I need one of yeah, those. Yeah, this is a detox from people. Yes. <laughs> or even just go meet people you don't know, but mm. you're also not going to like look for that. You're just also going to hang out. Mm. Yeah. yourself i mean yeah. it depends on what you want to achieve i think when you set goals of what you want to achieve in your vacation it's so much more easier do you want a relaxation vacation or this vacation is a turn-up vacation or is this an hour solo like really just self-reflection yeah. kind of yeah 
So maybe what you guys are talking about is a soul location that's specifically just like yeah, soul energy. Relax, yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> like switch off your phone the whole day type of vacation. Yeah. I'm in Taboeka Katikat. Or have like <laughs> phone time. Like, phone time. Yeah. 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 yeah so. Just watch TV. Like watch something on Netflix. Actually, it's true. Mm. Okay. I, yeah. I, I sort of just took the whole week thing into soul location. So maybe yeah. you guys <laughs> can just say how your week saw briefly then. I mean, my I mean, my week has been okay. You know, Sunday was Gondwana. You know, guys, you already know how it goes on this podcast. But I feel like I'm getting too used to it now. It's like, yeah, you're not know. getting the the high. The high that I used to get is not the same as it is now. Right now, it's like uh, I already know what to expect, and it's such good vibes, good energy. I have nothing against it, but it's just like, okay, am I almost going to say what else is gonna replace my Gondwana era? Mm-hmm. Um, maybe not, but I'm I'm still in it. But yeah, I'm Netflix a big and chill. <laughs> I don't want to become those people. I'm actually becoming those people, but yeah, those the homebodies. Um, but yeah, so there was that. Um, MTS, which is my new podcast as well, my tech story is going on well. Um, mm-hmm. it's picking up really good, and I'm really happy about that. Um, you know, I already when I was at Kondran, I met like four people telling me about it. So I was very like, oh my gosh, like this is very amazing. Yeah. Might be my life changing opportunity as well. So yeah, very happy with how that's going. And I think those are the two highlights of my week. I think work wise, which is my it's not a nine to five, my corporate job, I think it's going. <laughs> yeah. It's going it's flowing. and it's uh it's going and I need it to continue going because I need plan I I have future yeah. plans that involve me still getting a regular source of income. So mm. we, are, we are we are moving strong. But uh uh recently my role kind of transitioned to something else, which is more on a PR content perspective, mm. uh rather than a growth acquisition perspective. Uh those are the two different things in marketing. And at first I was very like, ah, I feel like this might be a demeaning role for me. Like, what is this meant for? Like, I mean, Trajectory. growth is like the big, I think for my interpretation, it was that growth marketing is like the leader of marketing, especially in mm. tech. But um, as I settle in and into the PR role and just getting all these things, I'm like, oh my gosh, this aligns so much with my personality. Like, yeah, I'm not too sad. upset about it. Ooh. I'm going for like maybe tech events for um my corporate job, but this go in line so well with my current personality as a tech person because okay. I'm trying to grow my tech podcast as well. So You're just mixing, yeah. I'm mixing both of my personalities, and it doesn't have to feel like tough work all the time because it feels so natural to me to just interact with people, get more conversant in the tech space, have those like PR things, events, planning, like content. Yeah, I'm not too <laughs> upset anymore. Mm. I've just let go and let go. So mm. that's the way. That's and the I've way. made an internal decision to do something. I'm not gonna share with you guys now, but I shared with the team. So yeah. I'm oh, not... oh ask <laughs> the team. We know what she thinks. <laughs> <laughs> Even Yvonne knows. <laughs> so yeah. very excited but scared about that as well. But mm. necessary part of adulting. Yeah. Mm. That's me. Yvonne, you got a something to say? <laughs> I'm a... <laughs> I give you guys my highlight of the week. Um, mm-hmm. I'm kind of looking forward to going back to work. <laughs> oh. hey, um, would you say you are a workaholic? <laughs> She what, enjoys what guys, she does. My second name is Oera. Like literally means work. Of, of work. <laughs> exactly. Um, but I'm looking forward to making money. Yeah. Like there's, you know, my other business. If I'm not there, I'm not making money. So, mm. yeah. You being yeah, there. Basically. Yes. But I also, I like it. I like working on people's skin and like seeing the results. It's so cool that you can manipulate yeah. somebody's skin and then you get like a certain mm. result. It's mm. very, it's mm. very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Fulfilling. Yes. Awesome. Okay, guys, so, yeah, Yvonne is here, and we want to know more about her, know about your story, just how you got to be a business owner, doing such mm. big, strong moves, you know, mm. and, yeah, finding your purpose. I don't know if you can say you found it mm. yet, but, yeah, just sort of take us to the beginning. Okay. <laughs> um, I think let me start with the last question so I don't yes. forget it. Um, I'm really big about that, like, living in your purpose, and that's one of my biggest, like, cornerstones with, like, my personal brand. Um. I think, I believe my purpose is to empower other people to kind of chase their dreams and live the life that they want. Yeah. You know, like how you can wake up and say, okay, um, in six months, I want to achieve ABCD. 
And all of these things are possible. And this is a plan to get there. These mm-hmm. are things and the steps I'm going to do. And then you get there. Yeah. I feel like we've been so trained to think certain things are doable and certain things are not. Mm. Like, you know, for me to wake up and say, okay, in six months, guys, I'm buying a G-Wagon. You look yes. at me like, okay, like, go you. <laughs> but like, but, how? Exactly. Yeah. But if you actually have the plan, just totally go for it. Um, So I think that's my purpose. Um, it. But how Beaches Square started, it's kind of a long story. But um, I was... Like, I've had issues with my skin. Um, was a teenager, my skin was perfectly fine. My brother had really bad acne at the time. And I used to, like, make fun of him. Be like, bro. Like, <laughs> and he used to be like, your time is going to come. I'm like, no, my skin is flawless. Yeah. I'm fine. And then, um, sure. then I hit, like, 18, 19. When I was graduating high school, my skin, it's you kind know, of issues, but nothing major. Then I moved to the U.S. and my skin was like, I'm about to show you. Yeah. Yeah. So... And I, now I know why. Like, it was, I moved there during winter. It was very cold. I was not moisturizing my skin. So, like, I was breaking out like crazy. I was trying all of these Pinterest skincare hacks, you know, the turmeric, the lemon, the yogurt, wow. the coconut oil, the black soap. Everything in the kitchen was yes. like <laughs> I Yes. I got a chemical burn from black soap and I called oh, myself no. into a meeting. I was like, wait, everyone, like, what are we doing? Yeah. Um, so, like, I totally understood the frustration of, like, this is happening to me and I don't know what to do to fix it Mm -hmm. and i felt like the help wasn't really there so fast forward like a year or two years later i started this small side thing of like buying things from the u.s and sending them to kenya um i identified a gap that people wanted things from there but they're not available here and then there were not many of these businesses now we're two million people doing this (laughs) like importing things from there and bringing them here so i started doing a lot of that but it was mostly like custom orders so i would sell me like a picture of got to be blue and they're like i want this and then i'll bring it for them it was not very successful. Actually, it was a fail. Um, because I would refuse to take deposits because I'm like, I know what if I send the things and they get lost and then yeah, I have your money. Have to, yeah. yeah. Um, so I was like, no, I'll just send the things and you pay for them. Some people like, you know, would pick the calls when they got there and they would come for their things. Some people were like, I've never heard of you. I didn't order. I don't have money. So I ended up with a lot of dead stock. Um, so that model of business didn't work very well. Um, and also at the time, like the business started from a Facebook group. Um, called, what's it called? Um, Glam Life or something. Yes. It's a really big beauty group on Facebook mm. and that's how I kind of started and most of my clients came from there. Then somebody blocked me from the group. Hey, okay. And Wait. at the time... Is it a local group? group or yeah, it's a, it's a Kenya okay, group. Okay. It has like hundreds of thousands of members. <laughs> yeah, someone blocked me and... Do you I was know like, who? Oh, Just say the truth. I don't know who. <laughs> I actually don't. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so... It, at the time, it felt like the end of the world. Like, ah, my business is over, I guess. Because I felt like that's my marketplace. And now someone has blocked me from yeah. it. Um, but then now later on, I stumbled on Black Skincare Twitter. Um, and it's basically the space where these black estheticians just, like, are actually breaking down the myths on skincare and making it really easy to understand. Um, so I picked up these things. I'm like, hiya, Kumbi Skincare is like, ma. Mm-hmm. If you want the, the formula for a square, it's, you know, this it's for rectangles. It's the same thing with skincare. If you have acne, reach for these ingredients. If you're trying to make dark spots, reach yeah. for these. Um, so it's like, wait, do people like know this? And I'm naturally the personality where if I learn something new, I usually want to teach people. Oh, kind share. Of share exactly. So that's how I started creating content on Beauty mm-hmm. Square. And then the pandemic hit and then things just kind of completely blew up. Because um, I guess people had more time to spend at home. Yeah, yeah, and be on was social crazy media. It as well. Oh, yes, yes, and people are more at home looking at their skin. Nice. Not everything is going how it's supposed to be going. At this so, time, sorry, were you in Kenya? Or no, you I was Kenya still Kenya? living in the US at uh-huh. this time. So I guess the page really grew from a perspective of a community about learning about skincare and trying mm-hmm. to educate people on that during the pandemic. Um, then I just started being a bit more consistent with the business in terms of buying products and bringing them here. At the time, I also kind of like the job I was working. I lost a lot of my hours. It was shift based. Okay. So I was like, ah. Like, how am I going to pay my rent? Yeah. So that also kind of pushed me to be really serious about my business. And I challenged myself, like, if I spent as much time on this business as I do at this job, what would be the result? Mm. And I would work 16 to 24 hour shifts. Um, so like what? Yes. I, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, this one day, like, now that... 16 to 24 hours shifts. Yeah. What does that look like? <laughs> like, you're at work from do. 7 a.m. until 7 a.m. 11 p.m. Sometimes it's different shifts. So you'll move around. Maybe you'll do one shift from 7 to 3. Then you'll move to another shift to do from 3 to 11. What were you doing And then, then? maybe do an overnight. It was it was home care. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um. So, like, to give you credit, it's not active work. Like, you're not working on your feet the whole 11 
16 hours but like you're just being somewhere doing something Some watching thing, somebody yeah. some shifts are easy like you can do your own thing um but some not so much um yeah so now that i lost most of my shifts I was like okay let me challenge myself so I started waking up at like 1 a.m. because of the time difference. Mm. Usually I wouldn't be able to be engaging with people online or responding to DMs on time because mm. I'm like seven hours behind. Mm. So I started waking up at 1 a.m. So I'm up here at 8 a.m. And the first day I did that, like I, I was working from 8 a.m. until like maybe like 5 p.m. there, like those around midnight here. Mm. And I was actively working. I was marketing my products. I was teaching people wow. about how this works. And I made what I would normally make in a two-week check. And I was in one day, I was like... Okay, Yvonne, let's get serious. Wow. Yeah, let's get serious now. Okay. And I think the biggest connecting factor was just that engaging with people on like actually just teaching them about skincare and then selling to them comes as a byproduct. Yes. Like I'm literally just trying to help you fix your skin and we're doing that through me, you know, giving you this solution. Um, yeah, then I got more serious with it. I made some shifts in my life that allowed me, I cut down on my expenses so that I could not pressure the business so much to fund my life. Mm. And yeah, just consistent. Then I moved back in 2021 and then things just blew up again. I guess also being there physically with your business, it makes such a big difference because oh, yeah. there's so many things you don't know. Like where my shop was located, <laughs> I was I just cringed when I went there the first time. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe people have been coming here. So then now mm. I moved the shop to somewhere that was more convenient. Then people, I think, being able to connect with me in person really made a difference for them. Yeah. Um, And the business just kind of grew from there wow. so it's been taking it like one day at a time from there basically yeah and it's been amazing growth it's not that it's been a team okay yeah i know for you you're like okay it's been a process yeah, yeah. but i'm sure even from 2021 to now you've seen like wow this thing that i was doing that i was considering has actually become a fully fledged business yeah. wow i love that i think i i, I want us to really unpack everything that you've just mentioned but mm. but first thing that I really want us to get, not really want us to get into, but one of the first questions I have is first, what was your experience in the U.S. as a Kenyan? And, you know, what were, was it family reasons that you moved uh, mm. in the U.S., but just generally what was your experience as well? And was this second follow-up question, is, was this experience an opport- like a gateway for you to come back to Nairobi? Is it something you wanted to do so bad mm. or is this like kind of just happened and you were okay either way how it worked out? Yeah, Um. So, like, from a pretty young, like, from the beginning of high school, my parents had primed me that I was going to be going there for uni because they moved me from eight four four system to, like, an American high school. Mm. So, that's transitioning to that would be easier for me. Um, so, I already knew that's what they wanted. Why was that such a big thing for them? Yeah. <laughs> I think um, my parents also did that thing of living, like, in the UK for years and, like, mm. in the diaspora and then coming back. Okay. So, I think they were very aware of the opportunities mm. that it gives you to be exposed to that environment and then mm. come back here. Or if any content state, that's what I wanted. But they were just aware that it would give me more opportunities or kind of give me, you know, some kind of advantages in life versus just staying here. So, but even when I was in high school, like, towards, like, graduating, I was like, me, I don't want to go. Because, like, the stories you would hear mm. is, like, you know, this person is working so many hours. Like, you're mm. not seeing success stories. Struggles. I'm not seeing anybody <laughs> who's living in a nice apartment, driving yeah. a Tesla, and, like, living the, the job that they want or the business that they want. Because we're all told this one narrative about living the diaspora as a Kenyan. But, like, now I know the different stories. But then we went to visit my brother before I moved up to school. And they kind of talked me into it. But me, I was talked into it from the point of, you know, you know, come and work here. The jobs are paying like eleven dollars an hour. So, mm. as a Kenyan, you're calculating that's like one thousand bob an hour. Oh, wow. So if I work ten hours in a day, that's ten thousand a day. I can work twenty days. That's two like an eighteen year old. I was like, wow, that's a lot of money. But you're not thinking, Cost. okay, your rent. Yeah. You know, you have. You need a car. You need to pay car insurance. You need to buy food. I've not thought about those things. So, I moved there for school, and basically that's what I was doing. And the mm. plan for me was to go to school there. And initially, me, my plan was I want to work in marketing, digital marketing mm. in specific. Um, I'd done a small internship before I left, and I realized this is where my passion really, really lies. So I was like, yeah, that's my plan. I'm going to go to school. I'm going to finish, and I'm going to come to Kenya. That was always a plan. At some point, in the middle, sometimes I got derailed, but then eventually mm-hmm. I was like, I know me, I don't want to struggle. Um, but the the story there as a Kenyan in the diaspora is that you need to work these shitty jobs, make, you know, Kidogo money because the truth is people are working under the table because you don't have mm. papers to work officially. Um, so but people never really put you in the frame of mind of take advantage of your skill set. Because mm. towards the end, before I left, I got a really good job and it was still under the table, and like my employer knew that, but like they needed my skill set. 
um so i was making what i used to make a double what i used to make working wow. those shifts i was like why didn't i do this like in the beginning why i could have done this the in first the beginning thing that yeah. you yeah, advised yeah, to do exactly, exactly. exactly. The because mentality. everybody tells you these are the jobs that we can Available, get yeah. so you do this job but mm-hmm. you never try to think outside of the box mm-hmm. or even like starting a business like mm-hmm. now i'm thinking of all the things i could be doing even still you know if I, and still be making good money running my there. Yeah, so just want to say we're not advocating for yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes, illegal yes, activities. But, um, <laughs> people just need to like think outside the box. If you find yourself in that situation, don't always take what everyone is telling you. This is how things work, but also challenge that and be like, okay, maybe I'm really good at graphic design. Yeah. You know, start doing those kinds of jobs online, and you can make a lot of money. Or maybe I really like cars. Maybe you can, you know, learn how to be a mechanic and do that kind of work because blue collar mm. jobs pay really, really well there mm. compared to here. Um, yeah, so that was basically my experience. It was suffering for a very long time <laughs> until I think maybe the last six months is when I was living life kind of good. But that's because I'd realized like my eyes had kind of opened and then I was earning money for my business. So I was a bit more comfortable. Um, yeah, but I think you can definitely, if I was to do things again, they'll be so different. But Would yeah. you go back to live in the U.S.? I would establish dual residence, not okay. like to live there permanently. Mm. Um, I think after some time, the air does something to you. To you. <laughs> um, yeah. But there's definitely a lot of opportunities there. So I'll take advantage of that. And also, like, this is something come about the yeah. So, yeah. Mm. The last follow-up question I have is that mm. you said that you didn't want to go because of all these stories that you used to hear about the US, but those mm. things that actually were happening there and you yeah. made you... Like, this is why I didn't want to come here? Or was it all just like, okay, this isn't too shabby? There was moments of, like, this is exactly what I was hearing. Um, But also the company you keep, is it makes such a big difference. I never had met anybody who was doing anything different other than, you know, working the low-paying jobs and, like, living, you know, paycheck to paycheck. Um, But then now later on, once I started interacting with these other people, and I'm like, wait, this whole other kind of way you could be living life. So, like, my last boss before I left, um, he ran a cleaning company. And these guys used to make six figures a month. Wow. Like, doing something that seems really simple. I actually saw, uh, yeah. yeah. I actually and, saw a TikTok of someone say, <laughs> of it was like a funny thing. People working at 9 to 5 and it was someone crying and working day in, day out. Mm. And then people who run, I think, like a newspaper, or not newspaper business, but it was something, like, I don't know, people who sell socks or something. Mm. And then they're, like, counting their bills. The money, and, yeah. One, two, three, four. Or chicken. It was people who are selling chickens. Mm. So I'm like, it's, you really need to think outside the box sometimes to yeah. think, anyway, like, yeah. how can and I do even if I'm doing less and more, but at this or do I have to be a slave to like the system, or mm. can I really get something that I can either build for myself or another opportunity that is? Why do I have to really think that this is the only opportunity for me and it's do or die? Yeah, no, and exactly. there's a loyalty that you feel sometimes to such a position you're in because that's the position you're in. I'm like, mm. if I lose this job, it's the end of the world. Mm, but maybe it's a revelation of something new for you, you know? Yeah, something that has to change. Yeah, yeah. so I think also keeping that company really showed me, like, wait, this is possible. And, like, the, the car that he was driving at the time um, is a really expensive BMW. And I used to look at his car and be like, Ooh. yeah, like, <laughs> I, like, why can't I yeah. achieve that? Because he was not doing anything revolutionary. Like, it's a cleaning company. You supply people to clean mm. buildings and whatnot. Um, but it just kind of showed me that even as a black person, I can have that. I can drive a nice car, I can have a nice house and I can make that level of income. I don't need to struggle. Mm. Yes. Mm. I love that. Mm. Okay. I think now we can get into the Yeah. I, I know you did things. mention marketing. Mm. So is that what you've always wanted to do? Mm-hmm. And did you feel like it was a hard switch when you were like, Okay, I'm, I want to do I want to get into entrepreneurship and all mm. that? Am I, it's been a good transition. Is it yeah, I feel like it hasn't been a switch at all because yeah. I feel like the role that I really shine in in my business is that when okay. it comes to social media marketing and building our community online. Um, yeah, it's something I've always wanted to do and even now I'm still trying to figure out ways to do that outside of my business because oh. I'm really passionate about it. Um, I, I think I'm good at it because um, yeah. like when I'm training, I'm currently training like a new staff member who's taking over that job yes. and so many things feel like common sense to 
and like I'm realizing it's, realize it's, 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 it's not really, common it's sense. Not, yeah. yeah, like it comes really easily to me. Um, and I have helped like a friend or two like build that for their business, and I'm like. I, I really would want to help other businesses do this because mm-hmm. sometimes I'm scrolling online and I'm looking at someone's business and I'm like, I should really be doing ABCDFG. Um, and I realize I need, like, people, do, they just don't, they know. don't know. Yeah, yeah. so it's something yeah. that I would definitely want to delve into on the side. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. How many sides can you, you know, <laughs> yes, um, yes, like my you work till Saturday. Seven sources of income. Like that that is my my target. That is my target. So Nakia, when are you do here, you guys? leave space for you to live <laughs> so and to enjoy the your point is, these businesses need to run themselves, you know? So when it comes to like like a product based business where you sell things, you should be able to run it up. It's just a matter of creating systems and having yes. employees. You don't need to be there anymore. Um so a lot of these businesses can run themselves. It's mm. just getting good systems and good management. Mm. Then the point is also to make sure that, you know, your work is high value. So like you know, if I'm training somebody for digital marketing, like I only need to do two clients a month because I'm, you know, the value that I'm getting in terms of like my return on investment money wise is pretty substantial. So I'm not overloading myself with a lot of work also. So it needs to be seven substantial streams of income that mm-hmm. are able to run themselves. One or two will need to require a lot of hand holding, but yeah, that's, that's really inspired. Inspired. Your inspired. challenge. Your challenge, guys. I I'm hope you're challenged. being challenged. <laughs> So but you also miss lots of streams of income. Yes, yes, but I'm really trying to push it also. Mm. And, and I like what you've said, which is what we're also doing in business, is setting up systems. Like, yes. it, it reached a point I was feeling burnout. I was starting to hate my business almost to that mm. point. You know, you're just like, ah, do I have to be involved in the day-to-day? Which is fine, as you said, for sometimes for the beginning, the hand-holding and all that. But once you get good people, mm. and good systems, then things can flow. And I can be in vaca- on vacation and I'm not... My phone is not ringing. Mm. Yeah, I think for me the wake up call is actually when I was on vacation <coughs> in December and I was working. Mm. Like I was coordinating everything that's happening on that side. Yeah. The next Mm-mm. vacation I'm going for, mm. I want to unplug. I want to fully unplug. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. This, this year yeah. we're getting to different st- <laughs> hey, you know now I'm about to go adult pro max so I need to start thinking <laughs> yeah, what other streams of income yeah, anyway let's say like for you yes you're employed but you can use even that source of income to set up other things other things mm-hmm. that's, always the, that's always the that's always the point yeah, you use can. this one opportunity to help build your next one and the next one and the next yeah. one yeah um yeah, and I, that's what I always advocate for because again when you get you can get comfortable like okay mm. especially when you have a Nine to five job, the routine is you already know what you're going to do in the office. At the end of the uh, end of the month, you're getting a salary that to you maybe okay, it's working for me. Yeah. And then um you already know maybe in a year's time you're getting a salary increase. And then you just mm-hmm. kind of live. And then you realize like nobody has ever become a millionaire by staying in a nine to five yeah. only and just like staying comfortable. Mm-hmm. So then that's when you start to challenge yourself and you even just see the lifestyle changes of people. Or, when you start getting a salary and you're happy with it, <laughs> at some point you'll start thinking, and these people who live in Kileleshu or <laughs> Westlands, them what do they do? Or like, yeah. even me, I need a car. This is good, but now I need a car. And now yeah, you start yeah. thinking, I need more money. And mm. so I think that's where Inspo comes in, especially now, of course, from transitioning from whether it was uni or from high school and then getting to the workforce. Um, eventually you start making so many realizations for yourself and like, okay, we need something else. We need yes, something yes. different. I like yeah. what you said, like the transitioning. Some people have grown up in families where they're not entrepreneurs, you know, mm. where your mom and dad, you just know them eight to five. I'm, yeah. I'm one of these Yeah, families. so you see, it's not something mm. you've been exposed to. Yeah. So you come out into the world, you're like, guys cannot be surviving on Salo alone. Like, them, like times have changed, what's boy. Happening? Times what's have happening? changed. Mm. Mortgage, know? then mortgage, now two different things. Yeah, so I think that, that's what you're saying. Your, your transition, you're always learning. So you're always learning. Wherever you are, whatever uh, stage so you yeah, are, give don't yourself yeah. up. Yeah. Give yourself and grace. Start where you are. You'll, your realization will eventually come at one way or another, hopefully. Mm. That's what I'm hoping for people, and you'll be able to take it off. And when it does come, don't feel like it's too late. Everyone with their timing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but hey, you're really inspiring me because me <laughs> sometimes I have a go getter energy, but they really mm. compete side by side with my lazy energy. So mm. I don't know. <laughs> I think the key is always remind yourself. Sometimes I also slip into that routine of like we're just doing, mm. we're just doing. Um, but also like a practice I'm trying to pick up um regularly is like every day remind yourself what is your purpose. Like this is my purpose. This is my like my goal. Like maybe you know your long term goal. Like you said you want to buy a car. Maybe your long-term goal is, okay, I want to buy a Range Rover in like two years. 
Mm. There may be a short term goal is I want to get my income up to this amount every mm. month so that I can be able to get there. Mm. Then what am I doing today to mm. help me get, get there? To where so I every single day you're consistently working on your long term goal. Because th- like you said, we sometimes get comfortable. Especially when, you know, rent is being paid, you're like living comfortably. It's so easy to slip into this like this yeah. delusion of mm-hmm. ah, we're fine. Yes, and that actually it can happen to you in business. It happened to me like before I lost my Instagram page. Yes. I was there. I was comfortable. I was so comfortable. Chilling. Yeah. Yes. And then life was like, let me slap you a good one. Like wake you up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> disruption. Yes. Disruption. Yes. yes. Disruption. But I, I mean, I have something to just ask, uh, just a uh, food for thought is mm-hmm. that, do you think that just to be the devil's advocate that maybe that because of where we, the position we are, mm-hmm. we are at and where we are, which is like in Africa or in Nairobi, like mm-hmm. romanticizing this idea of, hey, you need like 50,000 sources of income. But when you go to Europe, one person's nine to even two. Like I know in Spain, for example, because mm-hmm. I have a best friend who lives there. People in Spain will start work at nine. Mm-hmm. 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. It is serious. Yes, the people are sleeping. Shops are closed. Like this is serious business. Weekends, you can't find even one supermarket open. And then, you you know, they are very big wine people, 4 p.m., probably at the bar, you know, drinking <laughs> wine. And they are paid really well. So you fucked from 9 to 1, you've slept. And yeah, then you to 1 to 3 is compulsory. Like the country, the country, the country. You cannot, yeah. that's just their culture. And I feel like this, that's a big European culture. Of course, they're way ahead of us. They colonize mm-hmm. the entire world. But I also feel the society should move in a place where, in that way, like, we were not me sometimes I feel like well, we, was I really born to <laughs> suffer like this? Like why do I have to constantly think of my sixtieth source of revenue? My you know, mm-hmm. my and like is that what life is supposed to be? Is there a way that yeah. you can just we can move to a way where you just have one street stream of revenue and it's enough for you? Even if it's the blue collar jobs, well like, you know, like in the mm-hmm. US, they're paid well back in the US but not mm-hmm. paid well here. I know a lot of nuances are involved, but I just mm-hmm. really want us to be like to also question like system, is yeah. this really is this a me like is this really how life is supposed to be or is this mm-hmm. just the system I'm in? I think that's also what inspires of course some people to move abroad to different countries and just be like mm-hmm. hey me I like things soft. But I think it's also doing it with a purpose. Like you know like you're not just trying to accumulate one ten billion in the account to mm-hmm. cut it and see yeah. it's a lot of money. You still won't be satisfied. Yeah you won't like you need purpose. to do it to the purpose. Like for me specifically I know I want to stop actively working at a certain Mm. and have there's this movement called FIRE which is financial know, independence right, yeah. early mm-hmm. I want to get to that at a certain age to the point where like like right now I would love to take a year off take a year off mm-hmm. travel the world and just like think just think that's my job is just to think but I can't because you know I need to think about my financial responsibilities and I'm just not there financially so I think people also have to do it with a purpose don't just do it for the sake Blindly. of mm. you know amassing money but I think also people in European countries can they can do that, um, but I think also to a certain extent, if something was to happen to you, like, you know, you know, the rug is kind of pulled from under your feet, especially if you are not setting yourself up for, you know, being okay. Like, what if you lose your job or, you know, you become, you know, handicapped mm-hmm. or, like, something happens and you can't make the same amount of money anymore. But what if I, I think, die? True, that as well. Now, imagine you have a family and then you pass away and you're the breadwinner and then you don't, don't leave them any source of income. So I think the multiple streams of income is also just for comfort. Yeah. Like, I feel like now in this economy, there's somebody somewhere who does not give a shit. Like, it does not affect them in <laughs> any way at <laughs> all. Actually, they don't know petrol has increased. Yeah, they don't know. They're like, oh. actually, oil is this much more expensive. Yeah. And then, yeah, like, they're comfortable because, like, they have so many streams of income that even if one sure. is not doing well, like, they're still pretty okay. And for me, it's also that peace of mind. That peace of mind of, like, whatever happens, whatever happens, I'm good. Mm-hmm. I'm okay. Yeah. I like what you said with our purpose, because when we for night, for me, I think it's generational wealth. Mm. Like, I want my grandchildren to be calm, you yeah. know, and not be lazy, but like, <laughs> no, okay, there, there are systems that have been set up for us, and we can, yeah, I think I'm really big on generational wealth, so mm. it's it's beyond me, that's why I'm like, okay, the sooner I start, the better, and yeah, retiring early, or yeah. just choosing when I want to work, choosing, okay, I want to do this passion project, I want to, I want to go travel the world for six months, you know. Mm. And I guess I think these are also very active years for us, you know. Yes. So your body's strong and so I, I I'm willing to pay the price. 
Right. Yes. 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 Okay. That's really interesting. I think it's just also packed to different personality types and, mm-hmm. you know, how people view the value of money or wealth. Because I feel like sometimes I feel, I think differently. Like for me, my, maybe of course, as I grow older, it will change. I'm not thinking generational wealth. I'm thinking, <laughs> my, my first thinking point <laughs> is, <laughs> how can I still live a good life even if I'm still saving. I'm not thinking mm. I want to delay this gratification a thousand yeah. percent. Yeah. How can I still live my life but still grow my career? Because I'm, I am still an ambitious person. I am still like setting all these goals. But how do I still leave room <laughs> for me mm. to enjoy, that enjoy life? I mean, yeah. they say these are my best years, my 20s. And then when I'm 40 and now I'm, I'm financially free, like... Will there be things that I've missed out on because I didn't do it? Like, will I regret mm. not have not taking that step forward and saying, you know what, let me save up right now and just do it. Even if it's three months in a different country, learn the culture, you know, have maybe a remote job and whatnot and not be so rigid with that money and say we need to steal this. So having that split for me is, yeah. I think, my personality to try it. Type I because think, I really just like living a good life too. Yeah, I yeah. think you need to strike a balance. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. it's not a one size fits all, you mm. know. And someone can be look at you like, "Oh, you, you're just partying, you're nini," but they don't know what it's you're the, doing. It's your priorities Maybe and what you you've you've budgeted your money to afford you to party that much, and yeah. they don't know. Mm. To them, they're like, "You're using all your cash to party," yeah. but maybe it's ten percent of what you're already earning. And people so, only have a weird thought about it because of the value the shift in values the difference in values between what you think is valuable like this person exactly. is always just partying all the time but to that person like okay i'm not uh, romanticizing partying but that person really <laughs> prioritizes their fun time mm-hmm. as well and their social batteries or they can feed off energy about so yeah i don't know i think it has a lot to do with your value <laughs> systems as well yeah, yeah. interesting anyway I, I really want to know what has been like your highest point and what's mm. your lowest point so mm. far in running a business running mm-hmm. a business in, from the u.s coming to kenya mm. because there's always this economic or buyer you know nini yeah so just sort of what has been your highest your lowest um hmm. i think i've had a few i don't think i can identify like one really high high yeah. um but i think one of my biggest highs especially coming back is like i never ever thought that brand partnerships would be a stream of income for beauty square not yeah. for me but for beauty square um and my first brand partnership was vaseline and i was like wow yeah like, and it's not conventional like mm-hmm. you know they would usually partner with a person but then yes. they partnered with a beauty brand. square yeah. so it was it was like wow for me um that was one high i think also being able to open the store that we're in now is definitely a high high there are very many moments of ah a maniacic too like mm. this is it just Must. yeah mm. but <laughs> Also, that girl was really ambitious. I saw that store and I was like, this is going to be wow. ours. I don't care. I'm, I don't have any of the money that I need to get there now, but we'll figure it out. Yeah. Um, so that was definitely CBD. Location. No, like really location. Yeah, so I think it's, I'm really proud, like watching where we were before. These clients come to my shop and like, remember I used to be at Agro House and I'm just like, oh, you make a <laughs> But like now we're here, so it's a really big high as well. I think also the team that I'm building right now is a big high for me. The fact that I'm able to be here or even take a yes. week off and things are being handled and having employees who see this business as like they have a stake of investment in it mm. in terms of it doing well also means that for them. So they do like their absolute best. Um, I think close definitely losing our Instagram page, mm. which happened almost like a year ago, exactly to not today, but like oh. in June, yeah, June of last <laughs> I even year. Know the anniversary yeah. Like, yeah. June, June 20th, 11th, the faithful day. <laughs> I just felt like the world had come crashing down and I'd just come from another high. I was on Judy's YouTube channel yes. um, and it was such a high to be recognized by such a person and to be, for them to give me like the platform to share. And then that morning as I'm leaving, like that happened and it just felt like, wait, what? Like, you know, this is really messed up. But I think it was a wake up call I needed because I'd gotten very comfortable, like I'd said. Um, there's very many lows. Like I think in the past four months I have woken up and decided I'm closing Beauty Square many times. Many times. <laughs> like woken up, like wait, let me call my landlord and be like, okay, how do I exit this yeah. lease? Because me, I'm I'm out, like I'm done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so many moments of that. But I think also just being humble will encourage you and a team who's like That's my team leader saw me many times. She's like, No, mm. no, we're not closing. It's not happening. Just figure it out. Yeah. Um yeah. Awesome. How do you pick yourself up from 
moment. Low moments. Low moments. Yeah. Yeah. Again, also, I, you, you try. You share a bit of your low moments mm. online. Yeah. Some, sometimes social media is just, ha, 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 skinny Highs, guys, we yes. making money, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, really, how do you beat yourself up? Um, I think I've kind of given myself a routine now. Yeah. Like, if I'm feeling overwhelmed, I just let myself eat. It's like, yeah. it's okay, let's binge eat, let's watch yeah. the Netflix, let's ignore the emails and give myself time and just sleep. And then, like, when I feel better, I'll just get up and do what I need yeah. to do. I feel like when you force yourself and just be like, no, you're supposed to feel, mm. like, you're supposed to be resilient, you're not supposed to make it, let yourself feel this way. Like, you kind of pressure yourself and you just, you get really tired from doing it. So I think yeah. I just give myself room to feel it. And then when it's done, we'll just get up and we'll pick up and we'll keep going. I think also just reminding yourself that it's it's not a race. Yes. Like, yeah, okay, fine. Maybe <laughs> we don't have the money to pay this yes. bill today. Okay. See, tomorrow is a day. See, it's a day. See, you can tell them, I, I'll, I'll pay it cash or... <laughs> exactly. It's not the end of the world. Yeah. Exactly. So okay, sometimes it's like, you up. it's not that serious sometimes also. Yeah. 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 I like what you said. Just even, because me, I usually say, let me sleep a bit. You know, mm. let, me, let me take a nap. Because even when you're in that moment, you're so pressurized, you can't even think. You know, sometimes your mind needs to it's true. come out of fight mode. Be like, <laughs> okay, by the way. I'm like, oh. Just a creative way. Let me call yeah. Nani. Let me figure this out. Mm. So yeah, I like yeah, that. True. I like that. Any questions? <laughs> I think yeah, me. I really exhausted the questions that I have. Let yeah. me see if I have something else in my notes. I wanted to delve a bit into self improvement, which mm. is a journey mm. you're also really big on, and yeah. you also show that online, mm. and why you think that's very important for you. Why these routines and habits, guys? I offered her with her at like ten, and she said it's too early for sugar. <laughs> I was like, yes, because I've also been trying to reduce my sugar intake, and I'm mm. like, okay, I like how it's become. It's like normal for you and like mm. not, not, not now you know yeah. being able to stay healthy mm. <laughs> yeah um how should i stand up my brother has been singing these songs for me for a really long time my brother is 10 years older than me so okay. he's been in like an older space for longer so like from when i was 17 18 he used to sing to me about napoleon hill yes. and all these four that i'm obsessed with now no. oh, and i'm wow. like whatever like it, it didn't mean anything to me but like now as i got older and you start to realize like there has to be something else about this life. Like, mm. we're not built, like, you know, like, in a factory to, like, do ABC. Like, there's other things to this life. Um, So, I think I started getting into that. I think the first time I listened to his book, I was in another funk. Um, I think it was around the time that, like, I'd lost my page or something. And things were just, like, not doing well. As you can imagine, of course, sales completely dipped. Because, yeah. like, uh, the audience we had before was not there anymore. Yes. Um, and I was already used to a certain source of income. Mm. And then now it's half. Um. So I, I listened to the book and it just really like it was it's called Think Like a Devil. Um yes. no outwitting the devil, sorry. And I think everybody needs to listen listen to the audiobook specifically. Mm. Um Outwitting the Devil. Yeah. Um it's like they put him in character and he has like the voice of the devil. So it makes Ish. it like more enjoyable to listen to. <laughs> Not in a creepy way. <laughs> in a creepy way but like you know how a villain would sound in a yeah, movie okay. kind of like that and I think it truly really exposes you to a completely different way of thinking and unlocking how you can kind of you know use your highest potential you know how they say we really only use 10% of our intelligence or something yeah. like that and it exposes you to okay, how can I truly be my best self and yeah I think it's important for me to always maintain that mindset of being positive and like mm. I can do anything that's possible because you can tell yourself that like today morning then you go out and by 12 p.m. The chop on a maisha. Yes, life has beaten you up. Like, <laughs> every day occurrence sometimes. Yeah, so you see, you have to remind yourself every single day. Otherwise, yeah. you find yourself just being pulled back into that thinking of, I can't do it. Who do I think I am? Mm. Um, so I think reminding yourself that every single day just helps you to do that. And I think also being able to unlock your infinite intelligence and just like living your purpose, it's really important for that. I think that um, just to add on what she's saying, though, I think that also has a lot to learning more about who you are as mm. a person and the habits that you have in just in general, yes. the struggles you also deal with. Mm. Um, what I mean by this is for maybe let me relate to my personality, mm. for example. Mm. I know for a fact at some point when life is flowing, yani I'm feeling, you know, I'm, I'm go get a Nico Sawa. Has a lot to do with me taking care, of, <laughs> taking care of my physical health, or going mm. to the gym, or going for a run, going outside. Mm. Then having a routine. Mm. I need to wake. I need a routine. I wake up, you know, especially because I work from home for mm. my my corporate job. 
you know, leave the house at least three times a week to work from a different environment. Because when I'm at home, I maybe indulge in behaviors I don't like. I want to watch like an episode here, an episode mm. there. And then, um, I don't know, for me to keep motivated, there's a certain level, there's a certain content types that I need to put on the back burner mm. that I may necessarily like, but don't are not necessarily good for shifting my mindset to you know, mm. pursue the things that I need to be pursuing or get yeah. to the mindset of, you know, you can actually do this. But the moment I lose touch with maybe my routine, mm. say, kind of like now, mm. lost touch with my routine, <laughs> all of a sudden I'm no longer going to the gym. At some point, I feel like, I I know, I know at some point, a breakdown is like going to come up because yeah. I would start feeling overwhelmed. Wow. Like I don't have life mm. in order. So because I know myself, I know exactly what I need to do to shift that mindset yeah, to Nini. Yeah. But if you don't know yourself and you keep even trying to motivate yourself, like you're, I feel like you'll be betraying yourself because you're like pr- making false promises to yourself on how you got to go get her, mm. yet you're not doing the habitual <laughs> everyday things that you know you need to do yeah. to get you to the next step. So yeah. that's something I want that's to add That's true. I'm, I'm very much someone who gets swayed by people's opinions a lot. Exactly. So I feel like for me, that mm. staying in touch with that truth every single day, mm. like, mm. I can achieve this, I can do... Mm. And like, I sometimes I take people's opinions to hard, like, too much. Exactly. Like, if someone yeah, tells nice. me... Like, if I was telling you, you know, in, like, next year, I want to open, like, a few branches in different malls, and you tell me, ah, Clifford, I don't know, that's a good idea. I will take it to heart yeah. so much, and I'll start overthinking, like, I... By the way, I'm a yeah, like I'm misguided. Like business. sometimes I don't trust my own judgment, yeah. so it's really important for me mm. to always remind myself that you know, like I, like I can plan for my future and yes. for that to be solid plans, and I can actually do anything I set my mind to be able to do. Sometimes yeah. people can't see the dream that you have in your mind that's so big because mm. it's not their dream themselves. Like yes. sometimes you can. Even, for example, starting your business or even this podcast. Like, mm. you know, when I explain to people at that time in podcasting, it was to COVID times, we are starting a podcast. <laughs> What's that? It's like, okay, <laughs> like, yeah, you go, girl. Like, but you feel the support from afar. Like, what is this girl doing? But now mm. when you're actually in it, because you decided to follow through with it, then people start to see it when you decide. Yes. You have to decide yourself. Yeah. First, I think you also need to remind it. yourself of that. And like, remind yourself. Yes. I have a reminder at 10 a.m. every day, affirm yourself today. Because sometimes... Mm. Yeah. I know you, that self-talk is also very crucial because what do you tell yourself every day? Like, you really need to feed almost every day if you can. Yeah. One, with gratitude, but also the things you want to achieve. Yes, more. but also reminding yourself that we've got here. So, like... We've got here. So, if we set our goal to get there, we can get, we can there. get there. Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, wow. So nice. Anyway, <laughs> also, guys, when people tell you, when people talk bad about... Not talk bad, or talk down about... Uh, on your dreams, mm. I've learned to be like, okay, you know, that's someone's world view. Like, it's their fears, mm. it's their, mm. it's their life. They're living their life, so this is the conclusion they've come to based exactly. on all these other factors that are about them. It's yes. not about me, you yes. know. Yeah, so just to separate the two. Awesome. I just wanted to find out, like, because I think I, I said you're like a mover and shaker. <laughs> um, how has this affected relationships? in terms of friendships mm. and romantic relationships as okay, well. Okay. Yeah. Um, hmm. I feel like even like from before, like when I was in uni and juggling all of those different things, I didn't have a lot of friends mm. because what time? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I literally have a schedule from 1 a.m. to like 7 p.m. Like I have no time for anybody. Um, But like now my friends will be my family, like my brother or like my cousins. Like when I moved here, the people that were my friends when I left, like, we're not in the same place in life anymore. Yeah. Like, sure, we can say hi, hi, but, like, we don't... Different spaces. We have different yeah. values and different spaces. So I, I I made a lot of my current friends on Instagram, actually. Yeah. Um, wow. And that's how it started. And I just found myself aligning with people who are in a similar space, who are yeah. also, you know, trying to build a big brand and those kinds of things. Um, Relationship-wise, it was, like, tricky because also, again, like, time. And then, yes. like, people usually meet people at maybe at work. But at my job, we're all women. Like, it's not <laughs> Anyway, the people coming for skincare, are mostly, mostly women. Exactly. Even if it's for the guy, the woman will come. Yeah, with ma'am. Me. Yeah, yes. drag. Or yeah. the 10% who, who come, yeah. I would, they already have, like, girlfriends and, yeah. and whatnot. Um, so I wasn't always in a place where I was, like, finding yeah. people. Um, But uh, recently, I just... You know, <laughs> I'm trying to find someone. a way to put it without like disclosing too much information, but yeah. like also make people be open to meeting people in unconventional ways. Yes. Um, 
yeah, so I'm currently in a very happy relationship. It happened in a way I was not expecting. Um, yeah, but I'm also actively trying to make time for it. You know, like when I plan my week, I try to make sure like, you know, we at least are spending some time together. And I also try to invest in my friendships. Like we have time that we come and we hang out and we try to check on each other and just like enjoy each other's like presence and company. Yeah. Um, yeah, but then like the circle is small because there's only so many people I can give my time. Yeah, uh, yes. true. Which, yeah. which I guess is, works for you because mm. again you don't want to commit to 20 people then now 10 people have got feelings for you because, yeah, yeah it's so true. Like but that. it helps to have those friends that you know we hang out once a quarter and like and we're both cool and it's yeah calm, and there's yes. no yes. feelings that are being us all the time yeah, yeah. Mm. okay mm. i like that mm. Cool. This has been such a cool episode. I really yeah. enjoyed. It's been actually a really nice episode. One of my favorite mm-hmm. for this yeah. season so far. Yeah. I think I have I just <laughs> one more question before we close. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At the beginning of this podcast, you said that some, one of your purposes is uh, your purpose rather is to just help people achieve, you know, realize and achieve what they want to achieve in their lives. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to ask, how do you? Just in summary, how do you feel like you're living in your purpose? Mm. Um. Hmm. So I think one, like being aware of it and like actively trying to work towards it. Um, and I think also this plan that, you know, I've set out, for, you know, the streams of income I'm trying to build and like eventually what I'm trying to go to because I want to build the kind of life that, one, I want to be like a nomad. Like I want to live, you know, this month I live in Bali, next month I live in Spain or whatnot and I can afford to do that. Mm-hmm. And being able to like teach people how to do this with themselves as well. Like take what you're good at and maybe um your skill set and be able to learn how to turn this into income that can kind of make you live that way. But I think also just sharing the things I'm learning about how to improve yourself and how to unlock this high achieving individual. Like those are the small things that I I feel like I'm doing today to help, you know, get there. Yeah. yeah. Mm, okay. As someone who follows you, I'd say based on what you've told us your purpose is, mm. I do are living in mm. purpose, you know, because I think even we met from social media, Instagram, yeah. before we met in person. And I was mm. like, okay, Yvonne is up at five. You know, I'm like, next, <laughs> tomorrow, that's a love that she keeps snoozing. Mm. Try, you know, mm. go for it. Uh, uh, do A, B, C, D. So, yeah. And I'm sure there are many other people who've been impacted. And yeah, it's always so nice to that. someone to message me and say, oh, hi, I started listening, to, or I listened to this book and yeah. it changed my life and my perspective. Yes. Where I start waking up at 5 a.m. Yeah. It definitely increases the pressure of me because sometimes <laughs> in me, I want to snooze. Like, I could care less about waking up at 5. Yeah. But um, I think I think in some ways, it's just inspiring other people to live better lives, I think, by doing it myself as well. And the yeah. impact is so huge because, you know, just one person, that one story or that mm. one platform where they hear that can completely change the trajectory of their lives yeah. and their future generations come. Like, it's, it's, it's pretty crazy <laughs> if you think it about is. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I know there's something that you do on Instagram mm-hmm. known as the gem of the day. So, do you have any gem that you'd like to share with us today or just share with okay. our listeners? Yeah. Mm. Um, I think maybe one gem that I'm yet to share is, I think... Hadith. <laughs> defeat starts in the mind um so it's very normal to go through challenging times and days where you feel like i'm defeated but don't agree to be defeated it starts in your head because the minute you say i'm defeated then you are so it's i feel like whatever reality you create in your head is what your reality will be like it will manifest itself into like its physical equivalent so always maintain a positive attitude it's really important to do that no matter what you're going through and your life will literally just flip. Like, it wouldn't make any sense how it happened. But mm. I think we attract the energy that we dwell in. So if you dwell in mm. a negative energy, it's going to come to you. If you dwell in a positive energy, it's also going to come to you. So just focus on that at, even when you're going through rough times. Mm. Yeah. I like that. I'm mm. Okay. Yeah. I think I have two more questions. Very short questions. Okay. Uh, basically, what would you tell younger Yvonne? Mm. Yeah. Now that they are today. I know you're still... Still say we are young. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but sometimes I feel like you younger everyone could talk to me. I feel like she was so tenacious. Okay. Um but I think I'll tell younger everyone like everything you think you can do, you actually you can mm-hmm. like do it. It doesn't matter what people think. Um just go ahead and do it. Um and I think also I would tell her to take care of herself. Mm-hmm. Take care of your mind, take care of your body. When your body tells you 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 know it's tired, take a break. Mm-hmm. Um I'm definitely very <laughs> culprit to like pushing myself beyond where I should be pushing myself. Um, and also it's not that serious I enjoy mm-hmm. life also enjoy yes okay. Mm-hmm. okay yes so what can we expect from you 
Allah. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. Because I'm sure guys are like, we want to now, you know, like mm. tap into yeah, what what kind of in the future. Yeah. I think actualizing my seven streams of income goal. That is my current active goal that I'm trying to work on. Um, yeah, so just having all of those flowing or at least that, you know, on that way. That's yeah. I think the best I can promise. <laughs> I'm one of those people who like I believe that life sometimes just turns out in ways we didn't expect. So I don't know if Peter will still be here. I don't mm. know if I might be in a totally different place, but at least I wanna have my seven streams of income. Yeah. And, and you're then, open to what? To anything. Yeah, yeah. Yes. GG. Do you know sometimes being GG it like blocks the possibilities? Yeah. Yes, yes. yes. I am I'm open to anything. Amazing. I think it's been a lovely episode. I don't think I have any last questions to ask. Yeah. You've been very um you've given us such amazing what am I trying to say? <laughs> like you have given us such wonderful insight into mm. what it may it may mean to be an entrepreneur, you know, how to shift your mindset from you know, you can't do this to you can do everything you possibly set your mind to, you know, mm. having goals that may not be realistic to other people, but very realistic to you as long yeah. as you plan yourself in a way that you know you can actualize these dreams of mm. yours. And yeah, just to empower women out there to do it. I think your story is very inspiring, especially to our audience, yes. uh, whether you're with any gender, I don't want to say true because these days a lot is going on, but just in mm. general, whether you're a man, woman, um, uh, there's a lot you can pick up from this conversation. So yes. thank you so much. Thank you for having me guys as well. Thank yeah. you guys. We've been yes. planning this episode for a while. For such but a long this time. is the perfect time to have you. Mm. Thank you for making the time. You guys she carved out time for, for, you, us. for us. And so. for you. More reason yes, for you to subscribe, listen good. to the podcast and yes. catch up with her. We're gonna leave her uh information in the description so you can follow up with her if you're interested in some of her services you can feel free to <laughs> and Muambie <laughs> Bantova branch sent you yeah. Yeah. awesome okay. thank you yeah. so much Yvonne and we're looking forward to to everything that's coming in the future yeah mm-hmm. and wish you nothing but the best in your journey thank you alright guys we'll see you guys next week my name is Alice Alexia Musal Yvonne <laughs> and we'll see you in the next one <laughs>